So moving on to another reason to shoot a Leica, um, and really for a lot of people that's what it comes down to entirely, is the lenses. Uh, Leica makes um, some of the best lenses in the world, and they charge accordingly for those lenses. And that's why guys like me buy used Leicas in film Leicas, because it's a little more reasonable. Unfortunately, on the R-Series, there really aren't any third-party lenses that I'm aware of. There might be one or two, but it's very unusual. I haven't seen them. So if you get an R-Series, you're going to have to buy Leica lenses for it. And the lenses are still not inexpensive because people are snapping them up to shoot on their digital cameras. Damn you, digital! But, you know, you got to deal with it if you want to shoot a camera like this. One thing you want to look out for when you're shopping for lenses for this camera is the cams that are inside the lens. Um, the, the, the lenses for an R8 and R9 need to be the three cam design. And I don't know if you're going to be able to see it here, but we've got um, a cam on the bottom and a cam on the top, kind of silvery. And then there's a third cam in here that I feel like you're not going to be able to see. Um, just know that if you're going to put a lens on this camera, uh, it needs to be a three cam lens. There are quite a few lenses available. They've got a few zooms. They've got some very wide angle lenses. They've got some very telephoto lenses. Uh, they're all pretty darn expensive. The ones that are least expensive tend to be the mid-range zooms. There's a 35 to 70 that's fairly reasonable in cost. Um, and its uh, aperture is a fixed uh, f3.5, I believe. So it's not the fastest lens, but that's what makes it a little less expensive. Uh, then in order of expensiveness, the uh, 50 Summicron is probably the next cheapest lens because it's standard. They made a ton of them. The, f the formula is very simple. Then, you know, the 35 millimeter Crons, a little more. Uh, as you go wider, um, it gets more expensive because... Um, SLR wide-angle lenses are more difficult to make than rangefinder uh, wide-angle lenses. So those you'll find get pretty expensive as you get down towards uh, the 21 millimeter. I think they make a 19 or an 18. As you go longer, it's kind of interesting. Through the sort of middle telephoto, it's pretty reasonable. The 90, I've got a 90 here. This is a 90 El Marit. Uh, it's an f2.8. This is fairly reasonable price lens. There's also a... Um, Summicron 90, that's more, of course, because it's a faster lens. 135 is pretty reasonable, and then once you get beyond that, it starts getting a little crazy again. Uh, the longer lenses can be pretty expensive, especially the longer, fast ones. As long as you stay within sort of a, a medium set of three lenses, um, kind of the standard three most people have when they're shooting primes, you'll be okay. And that's exactly what I've done. I've got the 50 Summicron mounted here. Uh, as I just showed you, there's the 90 El Marit. Uh, this is an f2.8 lens, um, and then I've got a 28 millimeter Elmarit. This is also a 2.8 lens. These guys are all fairly reasonable. I say fairly. Um, that's in the Leica land, so they're not cheap, unfortunately. That's why I'm trying to figure out what gear I'm going to sell now. Um, as I said before, it's a manual wind camera. It's got a super smooth wind. It feels like a Swiss watch when you're winding this thing, if I can do it without busting it. The shutter release is a little different. There's a little bit of a delay in there. Um, it sounds a lot different than, say, one of my contacts. It's, it's not quite as sexy. It's more of a clunk. But you can barely feel it happening in the camera. So I think it's pretty well damped. Um, it's a pretty satisfying sound, I guess I would say, in general. Can't complain about it much. There's one thing that really improves the handling of this camera. Um, it has a lot of weight, but um, it has an unbelievable difference in the way the camera feels in the hand, and that is the uh, motor drive. There's also a winder, but the motor drive is the thing that really adds the handling. Let me show you why. So to mount it, um, you basically take off the hand grip that has the batteries in it. Um, there's the batteries. Motor drive just slips in in its place, which is kind of cool. And then it screws into the tripod mount. This motor drive is beautifully engineered, just like the camera. It, uh, it's a, just a beautiful thing. 
The best thing about it is this hand strap. The hand strap and the longer grip down here turn this camera into a very easy to manage uh, piece of equipment. That's still heavy, well it's even heavier, um, but it just transforms the handling of the camera. I walked around with this thing for a couple of hours the other day and was perfectly comfortable. Um, admittedly, occasionally I'd kind of do like this or you know, hold it like this, but a lot of the time I just had it like this, hanging, you know, to my side. It's a, it's a big deal. I, I think I would consider it a piece of required equipment on this camera. So as to the features of the drive itself, it's got, um, you know, single frame mode. Let me go ahead and turn the camera on here. I'll put it in manual mode. It's got single frame mode. Uh, it has a continuous low and a continuous high mode. Uh, continuous high is about, um, I think, four and a half frames per second. Uh, one thing I've noticed is the drive is not particularly loud. Um, it's not that much louder with the drive than without the drive, uh, which is kind of interesting. I think it's because it, it, it slides the film along so fast you don't really hear it. The other neat feature the drive has is this other switch, which controls um, auto exposure bracketing. You can adjust the auto exposure bracketing by half stop, from plus minus a half to plus minus a full stop. Um, I think my batteries, um, given that they're pretty old, this is a camera from 96, I believe, so the batteries are probably also from 96. Um, they're on their, their last leg, really, or the battery is on its last leg, really. Um, so I can get a few rolls of film through it, and then it, then it seems to deplete pretty quickly. Um, these days you're going to have to get the battery pack custom made because you just can't buy a battery pack anywhere for this thing. As I say, this grip transforms the camera and I highly recommend if you're considering getting one of these, get the full-on motor drive. You won't regret it. Well, that about covers the Leica R8 and accessories and lenses. Um, I hope you found it useful. Be sure to, uh, if you have questions, go ahead and make comments on the video and I'm pretty responsive to those. Uh, thanks for watching and stay tuned for more photography stuff. Thanks. Bye.